on YouTube. Bring live stream. Let's see what happens. That's not what's going on. That's not the right link. I don't think. Yeah, it should be the right link. Yeah, I see him. All right, let me edit. I'm going to have to edit the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and start the broadcast and uh, let's see what happens, okay? Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining um, today's Ask the Expert on the ServiceNow community. Uh, we're going to just hold off for a second as our attendees join um, on our Zoom. And uh, I want to welcome Kevin. And so he'll be presenting today, Employee Service Center for Service Delivery. So please let me know when you uh, think it's a good time to get going based on the attendees coming in. I think we could probably go ahead and get started because this is being recorded. It is available on YouTube as well as um, on the community link. So we're going to be putting the um, recorded version back onto the uh, community um, event page so anyone can watch it yet again. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. So hello. Hello, everybody. Um, as Lisa said, my name is Kevin Mackis. I am part of the outbound product management team um, here at ServiceNow within the HR business unit. Um, relatively uh, new to ServiceNow, um, but have been in the HR technology space for uh, about 15 years, uh, doing everything from implementations to uh, selling, uh, and excited to be uh, part of ServiceNow and, and being able to present this Ask the Expert session today. Um, Within our outbound product management team, um, you've probably attended other sessions um, where you've heard uh, Kyle Sanders present on topics. Um, we're all focused on product adoption uh, and making sure that you all as customers are getting the most out of our, our products and our solutions. Um, if you do have questions, um, you can uh, put those in the chat uh, of the session. Uh, one of my colleagues, who you probably also have seen on these before, Michael Sheridan, um, he is uh, monitoring that chat. He will be answering questions live and uh, I will have him chime in with uh, with those that he thinks are worth, uh, you know, putting out to the broader audience so that we're all getting the uh, the best information possible. So for today, uh, the topic is employee service center and how you should be using that for providing a, uh, a unified uh, service delivery experience for your employees. Um, before we jump into that topic, uh, just some uh, housekeeping items. Um, other Ask the Expert sessions that are coming um, that are in the HR space, um, the uh, virtual agent um, and natural language understanding session has actually been scheduled for September 18th. Um, so keep your eyes open for that one. Um, and the mobile onboarding app session will be uh, on September 26th, I think we just decided. So uh, keep an eye out for those announcements. Um, one thing I do want to highlight, though, you know, for today, we are focused on Employee Service Center, but these two particular sessions, the one on virtual agent and the one in October um, that will focus on employee forums are topics that are very much related to Employee Service Center. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about these today, but again, those are big topics in and of themselves. So I encourage you to, to pay attention to those sessions um, when they uh, when they happen. Also, uh, a reminder that prior Ask the Expert sessions are also on the community uh, and available um, for review. These all get recorded. Uh, a lot of cases, the content is out there for you to review. Um, so you can get a lot of great information and, and get uh, up to speed on different areas of the product by reviewing these sessions. Um, again, I will highlight a couple uh, that are within the uh, realm of Employee Service Center. Uh, there's two here that are around content and campaigns. 
that, uh, again, important part of Employee Service Center. We will talk about that today. Um, but what we won't get into is sort of the weeds of how you use uh, content and campaigns, but these sessions do cover that, right? So again, a lot of these are, are interrelated um, and wanted to make sure that uh, you, were, you were all aware of that. All right, so the, the agenda for today is pretty straightforward, right? It's all about Employee Service Center. And what I want to do is sort of walk through why do you need to use it? Uh, what is it? What's it going to be? What's it going to provide? And then how do you how do you use it? Right. So uh, again, pretty pretty straightforward sort of agenda, and we will uh, jump right in. So, why do you need uh, employee service center? Right. What's the what's the challenge that we're trying to solve for? And when we talk to our customers, um, a lot of times what we find is is that each department within their enterprise has their own way of providing service or their own portal or site that they direct employees to to get service, right? Which is great, IT owns their area, so they should have their own site. HR has their own area, they have their own site. And that's all well and good, except for the fact that as an employee, right, I may not always know where I need to go to get the help and guidance that I need, right? We want your employees to be productive at their work and not spending time figuring out how to get the help when they when they need it, right? So for example, right, if something's wrong with my paycheck, right, is that an HR issue or is that a finance issue, right? I may not be sure, I may not know where to go. If I go to finance and then they tell me that I really should have gone to HR, how do I, you know, now I'm just spending extra time trying to get answer to a question um, where if I had one place to go, it would be uh, much more straightforward. Similarly, if there's something wrong with the phone at my desk, right, it's not working, is that a facilities issue or is that an IT issue? Where do I, where do I need to go, right? And with Employee Service Center, what we're saying is, is that that can be the single destination that your employees go to for all things service related. This is where they go to get help. And the benefit of having it all in one place is, is that there's multiple benefits of having it in one place, but primarily the first one being is that it's a, sim, it's a, a consistent experience, right? If each department has their own site, they probably look different. They probably are using different terminology for things um, and it can be uh, confusing. With one employee service center, one experience um, that's consistent no matter what uh, the employee is trying to get service on, right? The big one is really trying, is really around hiding the complexity to the employee, right? And I like to use, uh, it's probably been used too much, but I like using the example of Amazon, right? We are all very much used to, you go to Amazon, you search for what you want, and within one swipe, you've made a purchase. Super easy, super transparent, and it shows up, you know, within two days at your front door. But when you really peel back the, the curtain on Amazon, right, you have different sellers and the sellers need to get their, um, the orders need to get routed to those sellers. Payments need to, need, need, need to be processed and the payments and the funds need to be directed to the right uh, accounts. Then you have to coordinate shipping, um, you know, across these different sellers to the person or the consumer that bought the item. Maybe it's a situation where it's drop, sit, drop, um, drop shipped and that adds another level of complexity. The key is, is that all that complexity on the back end of how that transaction gets completed is completely transparent to the consumer that is doing a search and swiping and they've bought something. So we need that same type of experience in the workplace, right? Let me go to a site, search for what I need, either get the answer, submit a request, and any of the complexities of the organization are, are I'm shielded from that as an employee. Right. And also with ServiceNow, we're also trying to make that seamless between other third party applications that you may use as well. Right. You probably all have an HCM system that you use. Doesn't matter which one, but those systems are generating activities for your employees as well. Right. You submit a um, salary increase for an employee. There's probably an approval that goes along with that and that a manager or somebody in compensation needs to approve. 
that's initiated from the HR system, but we can present that to do within Employee Service Center as a consolidated list. So no matter what underlying system the activity is coming from, the employee can see all of the things that they need to do in one, one place instead of having to worry about going to multiple systems to do that. Now, when they actually take the action from that to do to go actually complete that transaction, we'll take them straight into your HR platform where they can uh, complete that approval or complete the transaction, right? Again, it's that seamless uh, nature of the experience that we're, that we're shooting for. So what makes uh, Employee Service Center different, right? You probably are using uh, service portals today within your organization for, for service. Um, what is it that Employee Service Center provides on top of service portal to give you these capabilities? So I wanna take a minute and sort of highlight those things next. Right. So started to mention this already, but the key one is really about quick, quickly getting help and guidance. Right. So as an employee is going through their their day, whether it's work related or it's, hey, I just got married and I need to update my emergency contact information. How can I quickly get that done without distracting from my my day to day work? How do we do that? Right. Like what are what are the things that we provide to help? Uh, in that space. The first one is uh, targeted content, right? There's a lot of things that you need to make sure that your employees are informed about or aware of. Um, and yes, you can send emails, um, but when they go to a, uh, an employee service center and everything that they that is important that they need to know about is there, that gets ingrained in their habits and they know that that's where they need to go to see that information going forward. And it's going to be relevant, right? So you don't need to spam your entire employee population with content that might not be um, relevant to them. So you're targeting this content. So if I am uh, in a particular geography or in a particular type of role, I'm gonna see content that is specific to my, my situation. And we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, in a second as well. The other capabilities that uh, employee service center delivers is around employee forums. So really with this, what we're trying to do is get employees to be their own content providers, right? Let's crowdsource information and let employees help each other, right? It's just another way where if we can get somebody an answer so that they don't have to uh, go look for it or go put in a, uh, a request or a ticket to get help, then we're, again, we're deflecting those cases and reducing the number of, of incidents that get logged um, by letting employees help each other with, with finding information. And then the ability to have tasks related to um, the different lifecycle events that might be happening or content that you're pushing out, right? So if somebody's going out on a paternity leave uh, there's a lot of things that the employee needs to do. There might be some things that the manager needs to do. Again, let's centralize all of those activities in one, uh, in one employee service center. Maybe as a result of pushing out some content, you want um, the employee to acknowledge something, that they reviewed uh, a piece of content or that they took a particular action. So you can tie tasks to, the, to that content as well. And again, that's all going to be uh, centralized within uh, employee service center. Some of the other key aspects of Employee Service Center uh, that make it powerful and, and make it the tool that you wanna use, right? First is that consistent experience, right? Regardless of what the employee is trying to get help on, it's gonna be, the, it's gonna, the site's gonna look the same, it's gonna feel the same. Um, you know, the catalog is there, for example, for them to go uh, find things that they need to do they can search against your knowledge bases and it's gonna be consistent regardless of whether the result comes from the IT knowledge base or the uh, HR knowledge base. These employee service center sites are uh, highly customizable. And what we want you to do is be able to take your corporate brand and leverage that with your employees, right? So if I go to your external site as a customer or a consumer, you spend a lot of time and energy coming up with your brand and that experience. With Employee Service Center, we've made it easy to match that experience internally with your employees, right? And you don't need to be um, 
the way that the configurations are exposed, you don't need to be a web developer to do that, right? It's designed, it's all configurations. Um, if you need to get technical and do other pieces that's available, but it's really intended for a business person to be able to maintain these sites uh, and not have it to be a, a highly technical um, effort. The other piece of Employee Service Center is just the different pieces that we deliver, right? So this is sort of like a, a, a Lego set, right? Where there's a whole bunch of pieces and you can put them, in, put them together to create uh, different, different things. Um, and we deliver a number of, of widgets and pages out of the box that you can use um, as we deliver them, or you can use them as a basis for um, your own widgets that you create to do uh, or provide capabilities that are unique to what your organization needs, right? But the key thing is, is that we've built Employee Service Center so that it's ready for that enterprise experience, that cross-departmental experience. So the search can be configured to go across all of your departments. Um, it can be configured to go across your different catalogs, your different knowledge bases, right? Um, when you're looking at your requests, right? Doesn't matter if that's an IT incident or an HR case under the covers, it's a consolidated view uh, to the employee. And maybe the a request is tied to uh, a life event, right? Maybe it's tied to onboarding or, like I said, going out on a, on a paternity leave. That's a more complex set of activities. And we provide pages that present that. And I will show you that in a, in a demonstration here in a minute so that we're presenting that in an optimal way for the employee to see exactly where they're at and what they need to do. The other important piece of Employee Service Center uh, to keep in mind is, is that it is mobile ready out of the box. So all of the pages, the widgets, when you create content, it's all uh, designed to be mobile responsive and be supported in a browser on a phone um, out, of the, out of the box. Now, that said, um, with the New York release, which is coming out uh, next week, we are going to be delivering the now mobile app um, as well, which the simplest way to think about it is, is it's, a, it's employee service center in a mobile app form, right? So the mobile app is really geared towards, again, getting access to all of your services, um, all of your uh, requests, being able to search across everything that's available in, in one uh, location from your phone. The difference is, is that with a mobile app, we can leverage the, the device and the operating system uh, capabilities that users are familiar with to provide a better experience, right? So how you navigate from uh, one area to the other or navigate from one transaction to another. You know, we all know how to use apps. You get that interaction. Um, for things like notifications, when you have something to do, you get the banner that shows up. So you see right away that you need to do something, you tap on it, it takes you into the app specifically where you need to um, respond to that notification, right? You can use your, the, the phone, excuse me, you can use the camera within the device to take a picture of your laptop if you're having issues with it so that the um, IT agent on the other end knows exactly which model you have um, when they start to work on your, on your issue, right? So the bottom line here is, is that you have choices, right? You can create a uh, mobile responsive experience uh, on the web using Employee Service Center. And then with New York, um, you'll also have the option of providing uh, an app experience and there'll be more information coming on that in other session, sessions, so, so be on the lookout. Um, as a side note, um, everything that I'm covering today um, and I will show you in the demo is all uh, Madrid-based. Um, there might be a couple things that you see uh, that are specific to New York, but I will call those out um, as we go through. All right, so again, the, just to sort of recap uh, a little bit of what we covered around what makes uh, Employee Service Center unique and sort of highlight why it's important, right? So at the core of Employee Service Center, again, over a service portal, is that first concept of, of content, right? You need, you need to be able to push content out to employees and you need the um, underlying capabilities to make that effective. So what does that mean? One is, is you want to be able to define audiences, right? So um, you might, when you're creating content or you're delivering content, it's going to be specific to people based on things like their location or their geography, um, the office that they work in, 
the job that they're in, you know, are they a manager, are they not a manager? Um, so you wanna be able to uh, use those audiences to target who receives what. You also wanna be able to schedule it, right? T typically when you're pushing out content, it's tied to uh, an event um, and you wanna make people aware of that event and so you can schedule these items. And then tasking is very uh, key in this because you do want to have some accountability that somebody's reviewed content that you've pushed out. So the ability to tie to-dos uh, to um, your content is, is also uh, valuable as well. And you know, we're talking about Employee Service Center, but just keep in mind that when you are creating and publishing content, the destination or the target for that can be a portal. Um, it could also be uh, the community, right? So if you're using the employee forums, uh, the community could be the target for that content or it could be a notification, right? So content, you need to think about it as sort of a, a piece of content, right? So an example would be, let's say you work in a location where there's a parking garage and maybe there's gonna be some maintenance done to that garage and it's gonna be closed you know, next Friday you could create a piece of content that gets posted on the employee service center and it would only go out to employees that work in that location, right? So when they log on, uh, log in employee service center, they would say, Hey, parking garage is going to be closed on Friday. And they're the only people that would see that. Right. And if you put an acknowledgement on that, then the next time they come to the site, that piece of content wouldn't uh, display anymore because they've, they've seen it. They're aware of it. They've acknowledged that they're aware of it. You don't need to continue to, to present that content to them, right? So sort of think about that as the, the single piece of content um, and delivering that. Now, the next piece, which builds on top of that is content automation, right? So content automation is really taking individual pieces of content and putting them together into campaigns, right? And being able to take those campaigns and schedule when content goes out and what order do things go out in, right? And when you're creating a campaign, you typically want to um, keep track of how effective that campaign is, right? How many people uh, did it reach? How many people actually took action on the campaign? You know, if we were created a campaign to solve a problem, you know, were we effective in, in helping address that, that issue? So an example here would be more along the lines of, let's say um, open enrollment, right? If you think about open enrollment, there's usually a lot of communication that goes along with that, and it happens um, over a period of time. So the campaign would be open enrollment, but then you'd have different bundles, and the bundles would have different pieces of content in it. So maybe a month before open enrollment starts, you have a very generic bundle or piece of content that goes out to say, hey, uh, be on the lookout, open enrollment starts uh, in a month, um, just want to let you know sort of thing. Right. A week before, you could have another piece of content that goes out as part of the campaign that says open enrollment opens next week. Uh, here's where you can find the latest information and all the plan updates um, so that you're ready to uh, make your selections. And then on the day that open enrollment opens, you have another piece of content that goes out. Right. So you sort of get the idea that uh, content automation is really about packaging content so that it can be distributed uh, in a timely manner and provide different levels of information as that, uh, as that activity rolls on. The other part of uh, Employee Service Center is the forums, right? So again, this is the concept of um, having a place where employees can go to uh, have conversations online, uh, provide questions, get answers, but it's more than just a, a post sort of solution. It's really, you can have blogs, you can put documents out there, um, you post videos, have events. Um, as a side note, the ServiceNow community site is based, the forums are based on that same technology, right? So if you think about the community, it has all of these things on it, right? There's blog posts, there's conversations, uh, there's events like this one that are available out there. So that's the, basically the technology that we're leveraging uh, for the community is, is what you have access to within ServiceNow um, for Employee Service Center. And then the other key piece of Employee Service Center, again, are those widgets and pages that we deliver out of the box so that you don't have to build them, right? So being able to put um, a unified search uh, 
on the page, right? So that you can search across um, all of your, your content, um, whether it's a knowledge base or a catalog, right? Being able to have a catalog that encompasses all of your departments, right? One catalog that shows me IT, HR, um, you know, finance, facilities, all on one, uh, one page, because again, as an employee, I don't necessarily know where any of those things fall, right? The to-dos pages that are, again, pre-configured or delivered so that if it's just a, a, a straight to-do versus a life event that has multiple to-dos, the pages are optimized to present that, those different types of information in the best possible way, right? So again, the, the recommendation is, you know, use the widgets that we deliver as much as possible. Um, because what that does is it just helps with keeping, um, keeping you in that, under that umbrella of out of the box. So as you upgrade, um, you won't have any issues. So even if you come across scenarios or use cases where you do need to build your own widget, you can probably use one of the ones that we deliver as a starting point and modify it. Um, and then again, you're, you're sort of uh, securing your, your upgrade or eliminating any upgrade risk down the road. All right. So next, I want to jump into a demonstration, but I'll, I'll pause real quick and just, uh, Michael, any, any questions that uh, have come across that we might want to uh, get out there? There is. So I've answered a few and one's come in recent. Um, and the question is, is how do you plan the deployment of the ESC, all teams and departments at the same time? Or do you go in stages like HR, IT facilities, et cetera? And do we have customer stories of deployment? Yep. So I can, uh, I'll provide an answer. And then if you want to add in, Michael, that would be great. Sure. So that's a great point. Um, and I have that uh, sort of called out on a slide later. But to answer the question, that's probably one of the key uh, challenges with rolling out ESC is getting all of the departments to the table and getting them to agree on um, design, layout, um, and putting a governance model in place is also sort of key to the success of, uh, of, of a successful employee service center rollout, right? Because again, it's one destination, but each department's going to own their own content, right? Each department's going to own their own catalog. So you want to make sure that there's some consistency into how those items are presented to, uh, to users, right? Um, I think, you know, I know you probably all heard it before, but, you know, we're service now is customer zero, right? So we use all of our own uh, capabilities and we're always on the latest release before anybody else is. Um, and we, have one employee service center, you actually will see some examples of it in some of the other slides later, um, where this is, uh, where this is in action. And it's one of those cases where, you know, our, our uh, Pat Waters, our uh, CHRO and um, Chris Betty, our CIO are, you know, in lockstep with um, how they want to run their businesses and they communicate all the time and their teams work together to provide that, that great experience. Um, Michael, anything you want to add from your, I know you, you work with a lot of implementations and, and a lot of customers too, so you may have other points you want to add. Yeah, so from a deployment perspective, it's really get buy-in, it's really getting buy-in from the other, um, you know, departments of the organization just to structure, you know, visually how that's going to look. So really along with, with what Kevin said earlier, it's really, um, you know, kind of a conglomerate of those different departments to make sure that it facilitates all of the needs. I mean, the employee experience, there's still some IT aspects that, you know, want to be shown within the ESC. So really it's kind of a meeting of the minds and, and having that governance is really where I've seen it as being successful. Thanks. Um, other, other questions, Michael, there? Um, there were some that were answered, but another um, question was, do all departments have to be on service now? What's the effort and prep required in order for knowledge and contents from all departments to be uh, compatible and usable? Good, good question. So I think, uh, do all departments need to be on service now? Um, not necessarily. And I think how we would uh, integrate those into Employee Service Center would vary based on what they're using or what level of service you need to provide to those areas. Um, obviously, if the other departments are in service now, you're going to get a, a certain level of experience that's going to be more unified than if they're not. 
but it doesn't mean that we can't uh, integrate with those other other systems, right? That's that's the sort of the bread and butter of our of our platform. Um, what was the other part of that question, Michael? There was another part that I missed. The other part was what's the effort and prep required in order for knowledge and contents from all departments to be compatible and usable? Yeah, I think that, I don't know if you want to take that one, Michael, but I think in general, that's probably a, a whole nother topic in and of itself <laughs> of how to, how to uh, unify content and, and knowledge. Um, I know we do have some, uh, some resources out on the community that do talk about best practices around knowledge. I think I've got that actually a link to one of them. Uh, in the one of the slides later. Uh, Michael, do you have other points that might be worth mentioning? I, I can, and I'll try to give the short answer. Um, sometimes I get long-winded, but- um, <laughs> That's why I'm struggling. Um, I'm struggling too with that one because it's, it's a loaded question. <laughs> it, it, it really ex expands, but in short, we have the configurable way to bring those different um, you know, catalogs and knowledge in. And as far as compatibility, it's really on the same platform. So that's really the beauty of the platform is that there's not different um, things that we have to do per se, other than, you know, maybe separating into, well, these are IT type um, um, knowledge or these are IT type um, catalogs. But uh, I, I answered in a question earlier is that we have the ability as an employee to filter those down. So if it's a matter of, well, I want to search all knowledge, but I'm just really concerned with benefits within HR. Um, I could I could filter that down, you know, within the ESC. So that's the beauty is is we provide all of the catalogs, all of the knowledge, and of course it's all compatible. But if I'm looking for a specific knowledge article in IT and want to filter down by the IT knowledge base, I have that ability within the ESC. So we facilitate yeah. um, that that separation, but still keeping it agnostic, um, but uh, you know, really meeting the need of the employee. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Any other ones that you want to throw out now or we, should we keep moving ahead? Yeah, I think we, we covered the, the, the questions that I haven't answered already. So I okay. think we could keep moving. Cool. So what I wanted to do is uh, switch over and um, do a, a, a sort of a demo of ESC to sort of highlight uh, some of the things that we've been uh, talking about. So we're just going to look at this uh, look at Employee Service Center from a couple of different perspectives. Um, and this first one is Nick, and Nick is a new hire, right? He's actually in the uh, onboarding process. So if you think about that, uh, that scenario for a second, right, it sort of makes it start to make a little bit more sense that his Employee Service Center is going to have different content on it than an, a regular employee that is been with the company for some some period of time so as a new hire you know, you're going to want to have uh, a message or a video from your uh, ceo that the employee can watch um, you're going to have more of a, a welcome message here um, but as a new hire if you think about things that you're uh, interested in right the content here and these are three different pieces of content right back to that point earlier that are being presented and as a new hire it's sort of talking about it's more, we'll call it marketing sort of stuff. Like how does our company work? What, how do we go to market? Here's why our customers uh, love us, right? It's all about um, getting that, that person excited to come to work and also addressing some of their key questions, right? Like I'm gonna be interested in um, my team, right? So I can, uh, as a new hire, drill in to see the, uh, the details of, it, of my manager, uh, or any of my uh, coworkers, right? So we deliver these profile pages um, as part of Employee Service Center. And one other thing that, um, if any of you are, are using employee document management or um, have heard of that uh, capability, which in, in, a, in a nutshell, it's basically, if you think about it as a, a electronic personnel file for your employees, if you're using that, and I'm looking at my own profile, like if this was Maria looking at her profile, any documents that she would have on her profile that are visible to her, you can display those on this profile page, right? So everything about that employee can be on one, one page. So a little bit of a, a digression there, I apologize, but these, the point there is also that the pages can be configured. So you, know, you can show 
uh, more or less information based on your uh, your needs. But as a new hire, back to back to Nick, right? He just wants to get familiar with his team. Uh, he wants to see who his coworkers are going to be. Um, maybe he wants to get a, a better um, idea of how the org is set up, so he can actually pull up the org chart view, uh, which again is a page uh, that we, you know, con uh, capabilities that we deliver as part as part of uh, Employee Service Center. Okay. Now, again, as part of being a new hire, you know, getting information um, and, and getting acclimated are key, right? So that's another area down here would be the forums. And here, being a new hire, we want to promote the new hire community. Um, you know, obviously, starting a new job, being able to get information and help around uh, your hardware is going to be important. Um, learning about commuting options um, might be important. So even within the forums, we can target which ones are presented to uh, an employee within Employee Service Center, right? As a, as a high level here on their main page, right? So as somebody who's been at a company for three years, I don't necessarily need to see the new hire community. So that wouldn't be presented uh, to me, okay? The uh, other piece I'll point out, I mentioned that uh, we have a, a session coming uh, later in September specifically on virtual agent. Um, so again, virtual agent is uh, an important capability that is not specific to employee service center, but is uh, typically goes hand in hand with employee service center. Um, obviously you can put virtual agent, um, you know, you can use it from other places. You can put it on your own website that you might have. You can, you can access it from within Slack or from within Microsoft Teams. Um, but exposing it as part, as part of Employee Service Center is, again, sort of key to that one-stop shopping for help and that, uh, that, that unified experience, because this is a perfect example of, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for, but I can see my options. And where this will get even better with New York is with the introduction of natural language understanding, where this will be more conversational, right? So I can type in, hey, I want to add Michael as my emergency contact, right? And the natural language processing can recognize that and say, oh, that's great. You want to add Michael as your uh, emergency contact. What's his last name? You know, what's his phone number and what's his relationship to you? Like, it'll know what, to, what more to ask for. Whereas if I said, I want to add Michael Sheridan as my emergency contact and his phone number is, you know, one, two, three, then it will just ask me, well, what's your relationship to him, right? So, Again, virtual agents important from a, a service delivery perspective um, and should be part of Employee Service Center as well when you deploy it. Um, and again, I encourage you to come back and uh, listen to that session on the 18th. Uh, Michael's actually presenting that with Marcel Goodsell. Um, so we'll go into much more depth on, on that topic. All right, so back to Nick, right? So Nick's a new hire and as a new hire, he's gonna have things that he needs to get done. And from an onboarding perspective, we treat onboarding, you know, that's a life event, right? So those of you that are familiar with our lifecycle event engine, right? You, you can basically uh, create a package of activities that somebody needs to do, and you can organize those into um, activity sets and put different activities within each activity set, right? So in that particular case, within Employee Service Center, we deliver this page that presents that lifecycle event view out of the box, right? So for onboarding down the left, I have my different, my, my different activity sets. And because I'm a new hire, I haven't got to day one yet, so I can't get to that. But from a pre-boarding perspective, I can see exactly where I'm at in the process. And here are the things that I need to, to do, right? So whether I need to uh, watch that welcome video, right? They want me to acknowledge that I'm watching uh, the video I can jump through that. And in this particular view, right, as I complete items, uh, it's gonna walk me through those activities, right? And again, if I have things to do that are related to your catalog, like selecting a, uh, a piece of hardware, whether it's a laptop or a phone, right, it's gonna just tie right into those existing um, catalog items that you have to get those things, uh, those things completed, all right? Now, any one of these could be an individual task or a to-do that shows up on my page, 
But this again is just sort of showing it in the context of uh, a life cycle event. And if I needed to, I can get to that complete history, right? So as I have back and forth with my onboarding representative or the HR person, um, I can see that complete uh, history from within Employee Service Center as well. Now, in addition, right, we talked about that, that search, right? If in this case, Nick, you know, being a new hire, um, he has uh, the ability to select, uh, he's gonna be given a, a corporate cell phone and he might be interested in trying to figure out like what's the best cell phone plan for his area, right? So if he does a search uh, to find that out, he's gonna get content, different types of results brought back to him, right? Could be uh, a catalog item to request an international plan, uh, could be a knowledge article, but it can also be a forum post, right? So again, when searching, you can configure what the Employee Service Center search is looking at. Um, and in this case, for the cell, uh, cell phone plan question, Nick's actually gonna find the answer within, within a forum post where somebody has already done the work and said, oh, based on where you're at, you know, here's the best, the best plan to go with. So let's uh, switch gears um, just a little bit, and I'm going to switch um, sort of personas. And let's now pretend that uh, we are Maria, who is going to be Nick's uh, boss. So uh, Maria is the one responsible for onboarding Nick. And we just switch to Maria. And the first thing you'll notice when the page uh, refreshes here is, is that when Maria goes to Employee Service Center, she has different uh, content presented to her, right? She's not a new hire, um, but she's also a, uh, a manager, right? So for example, you know, one of the corporate initiatives here is uh, really around being better about conducting one-on-ones, right? You know, this particular company did some research. They found out that employees are more likely to stay if um, there are regular one-on-ones scheduled with their managers. So they created a campaign to help promote managers um, scheduling one-on-ones with their employees. And in this particular case, the content shows up here as a, uh, a banner in the Employee Service Center, and it's tied to a knowledge article that is giving the managers guidance on how to best handle one-on-ones, how to get them scheduled and how to have an effective meeting with an employee, right? So now really quickly, just by going to Employee Service Center, this particular manager is being reminded about something that she needs to do and is also being given help on, uh, being pointed to help without having to go look for it, right? These other content areas um, in this other section, you notice are different, right? So. Again, from an IT perspective, the system knows that, hey, you've had your, uh, Maria's had her laptop for ready, uh, her, her laptop for a while already. She's probably due for a refresh. Um, so let's quickly jump her into that, um, that catalog process where she can select a new laptop and get that sent out to her, right? Proactively letting her know about that option so that, you know, in a month when her current laptop fails, She's not, uh, she's not down, you know, out of, out, of, uh, out of commission for a few days while she's waiting for that new, that new laptop to, to show up, right? So this is that key of different content presenting to different uh, users. Um, similarly, <clears throat> right, maybe in Maria's case, right, her team is all uh, virtual. They're spread out all over the place. So she um, spends a lot of time doing uh, meetings uh, virtually, and in this particular example, the company's moving from their current web-based uh, meeting technology to Zoom. So you wanna make sure that nobody's negatively impacting their workday by not knowing about it or not knowing how to make that move. So you can present uh, content about those sort of activities. Again, provide more information, whether it's a, uh, a knowledge base article or whether it's a link to some training that you need to take. And this is a great example of you know, this is one that you could tie a task to so that once I've reviewed this information or once I've taken the training, I don't want that uh, or I don't as an employee, I don't need that um, that reminder or that content to show up on my employee service center anymore. 
because I've already acknowledged that I've uh, done something with that. Okay. So again, really it's about the, 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 the content driving uh, actions. Um, again, Maria being a manager, she's going to have some things that she needs to do um, around uh, herself or whether it's around her, her new hires, right? So if she needs to come down here and uh, complete an activity around Nick's um, onboarding process, right? She needs to select which uh, network accounts he needs. That's going to show up on her tasks, right? And one thing that we've added in New York, this is one of the, the things that were specific to New York, is uh, being able to see completed uh, to-dos uh, on this page as well. But keep in mind too, like this is a great example of, you know, something that's highly configurable, right? If you're, if there are certain sorts of uh, to-dos that you don't want displayed here, um, you can uh, add filters uh, to display only certain types of to-dos um, on these pages. Similarly with requests, um, again, the request page is delivered and it's going to provide that aggregated view of um, all requests, whether they're IT incidents, right? So if you, as you see here, um, you know, Maria has a beneficiary question for herself that she's working with HR, uh, but then she also has um, other IT requests that she's managing for some of her employees. And she can see all of those here on this uh, single uh, page. Right. From a catalog perspective, same exact um, you know, concept, right? All of the different catalogs that you have um, can be uh, tied into any uh, given employee service center, right? So again, when I'm searching, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to search on, hey, I'm having, uh, I need a new account. Well, what kind of account do you need? Is it a, a network account? Is it a travel account? And all of those things would, all those options would would show up. Okay. So let's jump back over to the. Uh, slides for just a second. And some of the questions that came in um, started to um, talk about this. So I think it's a good, a good opportunity to reiterate, right? So what are some of those best practices in how you deploy Employee Service Center, right? I think obviously you've heard from ServiceNow quite a bit and from me today that providing that unified portal is really where we see um, companies should be heading uh, to really create that employee experience that's consistent with what they have in their personal lives with other uh, consumer um, services that they uh, are interacting with. Um, the important one, which we've already highlighted or, or touched upon, is around having that governance model, right? We are talking about cross-departmental activities. We're talking about cross-departmental coordination and having sort of a Having everybody on the same on the same page in how this is going to work is key, uh, and getting buy-in from your leadership in those areas is is key to this being uh, successful. The other um, thing I want to reiterate is just around having that consolidated search, right? Because that's what's going to drive the uh, simplified experience and get employees to the help that they need faster, right? So tie in your knowledge bases. Uh, tie in your service catalogs um, to create that that simple uh, um, that simple experience, and it's really straightforward to do, right? So just as an example, right? If you go in and look at how these uh, employee service center portals are configured, right? This is just a simple example, sort of showing, okay, what what things do I want search to look at, right? So you can specify, I want it to look at cal catalogs, I want it to look at community events or community blogs, I want it to look at knowledge bases. Right. So you can specify um, what the sources are. Then within each one of those, you can sort of say, okay, which knowledge bases do I want it to look at? Right. So you just go to the next tab and you can pull in the specific knowledge bases that are relevant. And same thing with your catalogs. Right. You can easily specify which catalogs you want to tie in um, to the uh, to the portal as well. The other, um, this is sort of along the lines of, of governance, right? Um, and this is an important one. It's really an opportunity as you deploy Employee Service Center to look at sort of harmonizing your content, right? Do you need to do some house cleaning to make sure that everything is organized consistently across different groups? 
because you have to keep in mind that, you know, employees are typically not going to search or browse based on your internal terminology for things, right? So you just need to sort of bubble everything up to a level where uh, it's just more, it's more generic and consistent across, uh, across departments. And I mentioned this before too, but again, keep it out of the box as much as possible. Um, for, again, we deliver a lot of capabilities um, out of the box, and there's a good chance that for most of the things that you're going to want to do, we have a widget for it, we have a page for it, something already exists. Um, and as I mentioned, if you do need to do something unique, use one of the delivered widgets as a starting point, right? Clone it and then modify it. Um, and one, it will be quicker, but it will also sort of protect you from an upgrade perspective. And then not to restate the obvious, but less is always more, right? So you don't try to over-engineer your employee service center. Um, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate the uh, navigation. Um, you don't want to overcomplicate the governance, even though that's important, right? So keep it simple. You can always add to it and change it over time. This is not, this is a great example of one of those things that you don't sort of set it and forget it. Um, you know, your, your employees needs are going to be changing over time. Um, if you have uh, an acquisition and you've got new populations coming in, you know, different business needs are going to come up and employee service centers uh, flexible enough to adjust uh, very quickly to support those different scenarios. From a design perspective, um, you know, like I said, this is this is an example of our internal ServiceNow uh, employee service center. Um, and if you've been to our external site, you can see that we leverage the same branding, uh, same general uh, look and feel. Um, like I mentioned, you know, we upgrade long before our customers do. So we are already internally using the the now mobile app, and the uh, the teams used the targeted content to uh, present that as part of Employee Service Center. So when I come into Employee Service Center every day, there's typically something different up here, highlighting whatever happens to be top of mind at that point, and it could be something like this where it's uh, technology related, or it could be something uh, HR related. Um, so definitely want to make sure that you're you're in pulling in the right branding and marketing resources uh, to make sure that you're keeping it consistent you know use the same fonts everywhere that you do on other sites um, make it as transparent as possible um, to your to your users that this isn't any different than any other uh, enterprise site that you have within within your company just make it easy to navigate right use terminology, name things that are going to be uh, familiar to your employees so that it's easy for them to find. And then also think about the content and where it, where it gets placed, right? So if you sort of looked at or the other sites that I just showed you, right, the forums are in one spot. There was all, you know, the, the, the three sort of going across the middle of the page content blocks, right, and then having like this uh, uh, hero sort of banner across the top. You can sort of think about how you, you have sort of like level one content, level two content, level three content based on the level of importance or priority and just lay your pages out that way so that it's it's consistent, right? So then again, as an employee, when I look at it, I always know the, the, top on, the, the stuff on the top, that's the most important. That's what I need to pay attention to. But as I scroll down, I know that the, the old standby things are always going to be there as well when I, when I need them, right? So, um, I wanted to uh, highlight some other resources uh, that are out there that I think are good for you to take a look at. Um, anybody that's been to Knowledge uh, knows that we always do uh, a number of lab sessions at Knowledge uh, for different parts of the product. And there was one that we did um, this year that was specific to Employee Service Center. Um, so I've provided that link here. Um, so that digital guidebook that sort of walks you through uh, setting up Employee Service Center and some of the different capabilities. That's a really good one. Um, just a direct link to the documentation, sort of the main uh, Employee Service Center documentation page. Um, and then I threw this training link in here because, and it says Service Portal Fundamentals, but I think it's key to remember that, you know, under the covers, Employee Service Center is a service portal. So all of the underlying um, capabilities and how it works is important. 
and then it'll make it easier to leverage some of the newer widgets that we've delivered or some of these other capabilities if you understand those, those core, uh, core capabilities. And then I added this blog post. Uh, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier around um, trying to harmonize your content to provide the best possible search experience. Um, I think this would also tie into the question earlier about um, how to coordinate and, and load your content up so that it works across all of your different uh, departments. So, uh, Michael, I'll, I'll uh, jump over to you next and see what other questions we have that uh, we want to we want to talk about. No, no new questions. So I think you've done a phenomenal job that we're here. You're addressing any before they get in, uh, get asked. So uh, no new questions cool. since the last. Okay. Anything you want to add? I know you, you, you spend a lot of time around this too, so feel free to chime in if there's other, you know, uh, highlights you want to, you want to point out. I think you did a great job of covering whatever I would mention. So nothing more to add, but, um, um, no, a lot of good content. It was, uh, in, in, very informative. Great. So again, I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time, um, to, uh, join us live today to go through this. Um, again, we will, uh, work with uh, Lisa on getting the uh, recording posted as well as the slides. Um, we'll get the slides posted. And for some of the things that I demoed, uh, I've included some screenshots of those things as well. So um, if you don't have time to watch the whole recording over again, you can at least download the content and uh, review it and, and share it as needed. So again, thank you for, uh, for joining. And again, uh, please keep your eyes out for some of these other sessions that are upcoming. With the, with the pending New York release. We've got lots of great capabilities and information we want to share. Um, so uh, we look forward to having you on and ask the expert session soon. Thanks. Yes, and I just thought I'll just mention that um, the link that is provided in the chat windows, um, both on YouTube and in um, this um, webinar session, you can always post more questions on that link uh, for both uh, Kevin and Michael to answer. So. Um, Feel free to, to consume again, watch it, and post your questions and interact with our uh, experts. And, and we look forward to having your next event. Thank you all.